Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Today I'm going to show you 10 great things you can do with the Logic built-in EQs. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit like, let's check it out. Right, first off then, I like to have my EQs first in the chain. Here I've got a tape machine on my master bus, but I want to put the EQ before that. Now typically you'd have to move all those down and then go like that, but it's, it's just a bit of a nightmare. So if you want to be able to put the channel EQ first in the chain, no matter what's there, just click up in the where the EQ thumbnail is, hold Alt, and it will automatically put it first in the chain. Blow my mind. Fantastic. That is number one. That is so handy because sometimes you don't want to keep moving stuff around. You just want to be able to do it straight away. Fantastic built-in feature. Now, on that same kind of line, you can also do that with a, uh, a phase EQ, the linear phase EQ. So let's do that exactly the way it was before. If we want to, for a start, let's put in our linear phase EQ just in the chain somewhere. We're going to click up on that EQ thumbnail and we're going to hold shift and it's going to put a linear phase EQ in instead of the normal EQ. But it puts it in the first available place in the chain. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Now, if we were to hold Option and Shift, so that's Alt and Shift, and click on the thumbnail, it's going to put the linear phase EQ first in the chain. Fantastic. So three ways of putting EQs there in different places. Normal EQ, linear phase EQ. You can put it first in the chain. You can make it so it's last in the next available slot. Make it linear, whatever you want to do. Such a great addition to an already great program. Now, sometimes early on down your chain, you need to gain stage. So typically, I would put a gain control in there, and I would bring the level up or bring the level down. You can do that with um, channel EQ, but that's not the cool thing. The issue that I have with channel EQ and using this gain control is that it brings up this horrible line. So if I'm then bringing up a load of EQ and bringing up a load of moves, it just kind of skews it. It just makes it look really peculiar for me. Um, and... I can't deal with that. I don't like that kind of thing. Um, so what we can do is we can make it so it doesn't do that. If we right click anywhere in the graph, right click and where it says visualize master gain, just take that off. And you can then turn up the gain or you can turn the gain down and it's not going to affect that curve. The curve is what we want. I like that to remain constant. I don't like it to be affected by my EQ gain. So you can turn it off completely and then you can use this to kind of gain stage. It's the output gain, so it's what's coming out of the EQ. It's been EQ before it's uh, having anything added or taken away. But it's a great handy feature to stop that kind of eyesore of the weird frequency graph. While we've got these curves on the screen, it's a fantastic feature to be able to right click in here and also have a look at these different scales. Now at the moment by default it's linear 30 decibels. That means that you can boost 15 decibels and you can cut 15 decibels. But you can also make that so it's 12 decibels, 6 up and 6 down. If you're making small changes then it's sometimes handy to be able to have that extra resolution. Just because this is going crazy off the screen, it doesn't mean that it's a bigger boost. It's exactly the same boost. It's just being displayed in a different way. And similarly, if we go to linear 60 dB, then we can make it so that we've got far more resolution here. It goes up to 30 and down to 30. Now, we can only do 24 decibels in stock EQ by default, but it's handy to have that extra resolution should we need it, should we need to do some extreme settings. But for now, let's just reset those because that's a bit crazy. Now, talking of level and needing more level or less level, one thing that Logic's analyzer on the EQ is not that fantastic at is when you've got some low-level sources coming in. So if you've got something that is quite quiet, it's often quite difficult to actually see it on the analyzer here. So let's see how we can counteract that. Well, over here on the left-hand side, we've got a scale for what's coming in. So right at the top, we've got zero decibels. Down the bottom, we've got minus 60. But if we drag that up or down, we can change that scale. So let's just alt click it to take it back to zero, back to normal, back to default. And then let's play something in and we're gonna see how dragging that up and down brings the waveform display up or down. Now this is quite a loud track as it is. So we're maybe gonna to need to bring this down so that it's not peaking over the top. Let's have a look. So you can see how you can bring it up, you can bring it down. It's not changing the overall volume of anything. It's just meaning that if something was really quiet or really loud coming in, you could change that scale relative to whatever it is that's coming in so that you're not 
peeking to see what's there or you're not trying to take a step back so you can actually try and fit it all in. Another dead handy trick. Down in this bottom bar, there are a couple of things that we look at every day, but we might not even really take into account. They're just kind of in our peripheral vision. And that's the Q couple and the processing. At the moment, it says stereo. Let's take a look at this uh, Q couple first. This is essentially the same as a proportional Q. And what this means is that as we bring our curve up, we can see that it narrows. If we have that Q couple deselected, then bringing that same boost up, means that it's far broader. If we have Q-couple selected, it generally means that we're going to get a bit of a smoother sound. So if we've got it um, selected, then it means that anything we bring up is going to narrow that Q as we reach that kind of top band, the, the 20 to 24 decibel boost or cut. But if we have it unselected, deselected, as we bring it up, it's going to be far broader. So if you're doing really broad boosts and you don't want it to narrow at all, then you can have it deselected. Or if you want it to do its Q-couple thing and you want it to, to narrow as it goes up, then make sure that Q-couple is selected. So this processing in stereo, what it is, is you can go for left only, right only, mid only and side only. Now left only and right only is kind of a thing when you've got something that might be a bit off. If you've got something that's been recorded in a weird way or anything like that, I see that as a bit of a restoration thing. But this mid-only and side-only feature is fantastic, particularly if you're doing it on a master bus or if you're doing any kind of mastering or bus processing. Let's pop this onto side-only, and then we're going to bring up the high end, and you'll hear just the guitars in the sides and some of the cymbals get brighter, but that kick and snare will stay the same, and that lead vocal in the center will stay the same. So we're going to bring up a high shelf just in the sides and we're going to hear how that is going to affect the track. Similarly, we could do that to the mid only. We could bring up the high frequencies in just the mid. So that's just going to affect the lead vocal, the kick, the snare, bass guitar, and not any of the guitars or the cymbals that are panned left and right. So handy. One thing I love to do with this is to automate this. So if you've got some guitars on a chorus and you just want to give it a bit of a lift, just a two decibel lift in the sides for a chorus, just notch that up. That can be so, so handy in just giving your chorus just a little bit more, a little bit of extra something. So far we've focused on the channel EQ, the stock built-in one with the analyzer, but as of a couple of recent versions ago, we've got three new EQs in there. We've got a an API graphic, we've got a Pultec style um, EQ, we've got a Neve style EQ as well. We're gonna take a look at two of those now. One of them is the API EQ, the graphic EQ. Now, graphics typically aren't massively uh, useful in any recording stuff, but one handy feature in here is this tune value here. Now, you'll notice how at the moment it goes up to 16K. If we bring this tune value up, look at the values here. They go up as well. All the way up to 32 kilohertz. So you can see how this is an octave thing. At zero, it's at 16, and as you bring it up to 12, it's doubled, and if you were to bring it right down, it would be to eight. What that means is we can add that real, real high-end, that real high-end sheen, that kind of mastering EQ. Um, I think it's the Marg EQ that kind of does that, where it's got all the way up to 30 kilohertz. And it's a great way of really adding an extra layer of gloss to something without actually adding too much of that kind of area of high-end that's just going to get in the way and just sounds a bit aggressive. It's the really, really high stuff. So let's do that now. Let's take that all the way up to 32K. And let's bring that up. And this is on the master bus, so we're just going to add some high end just in that real sheen high end area. It's so, so high. We can't hear up to 32 kilohertz, but the point is the curve that it's creating, it's bringing it up at 32 is the maximum, but it's also bringing it up down at 20 and down at 18. So it's just a real gentle lift all the way up into those super high frequencies. And that's a great way of bringing up the real, real top end, that real clarity and intelligibility without bringing up the high frequencies that's going to get the aggressive cymbals or the aggressive guitar solo or anything like that.
Last but not least, then, this is using the vintage EQ. This is using the uh, Neve style kind of EQ. If we uh, record a DI dry guitar part that needs a bit of livening up, let's listen to this as it stands. <laughs> Cool. I like to stack about eight of them on top of each other. And then you've got the uh, saturation in there, the drive circuit, which um, quite appropriately goes up to 11. I like to slam that all the way up on all of them. And I've got eight stacked up at the moment. And then just get a great ACDC Led Zeppelin kind of old school guitar tone. <laughs> which is fun. Thanks for checking the video out. Make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit like, and if you like the sound of the drums and this video, then check out the drum samples in the links below. That's shop.nastudios.co.uk. Make sure you check out the Instagram as well. That's n underscore a underscore studios. Loads of great stuff going on there at the moment. Thanks a lot. Take care.